Yeah, in case someone clicks this video and isn't in for a lengthier you know, discussion where we talk about the ins and outs of this and all that sort of thing, I, I just want to tell you what I think uh, as a man <laughs> who's been married for over 20 years and who uh, got married relatively early um, and has teenage kids now, just like you do. All that's true of you, yeah. I think. And so I, I'm going to give this to you at the jump, just in case you don't get much further, just so we, we know we have it out there. So they already clicked off. number one, date with intention. Uh, the, the idea of dating, this is, this is according to me. Pritchett can argue with me if he wants and be wrong all he wants. But you want to date with a purpose. And the purpose needs to be something more than simply the superficial well, I want to have fun. I want to go out. I want to do, there's nothing wrong with having fun and going out. That's not the point. But the point is, why are you doing this? And of course, that leads us to a couple of other things. The second thing is, as unpopular as this will be, uh, my advice is don't date a Christian. Don't, don't date a Christian. Don't date someone who is not a Christian if you're a Christian. And this is Christian dating advice. And the reason I'm advising that you date a Christian if you are a Christian is because number one, that's what Christians think you sh should do if you're a Christian, but also because even if you're not a Christian, uh, you need to understand that these worldview issues, if a Christian who would listen to a video from us about how to date as a Christian is taking all these things seriously, then it's going to be a miserable time for them and then perhaps for you trying to remain one flesh with someone who basically uh, sees the world completely differently on these fundamental issues. So you date a Christian. Uh, I heard someone else say, don't sexualize uh, th this situation. And this is just a nuance. I understand what they're trying to say, and I agree with that, is don't cross sexual boundaries. And where those boundaries are would have to be part of a deeper discussion. And I'm happy to tell you that from my perspective, ready to hear me sound like a youth pastor because they're right about a lot of things. And here's one thing that youth pastors say that is absolutely right. And that is, you're dating someone who, if you don't marry them, may well be someone else's spouse. And if and so you treat them with the physical respect that you would treat that you would want someone dating your future spouse to treat them with. Um, but I don't think you can say don't sexualize it because that seems too general. I mean, sexuality is a part of the dating enterprise insofar as you're attracted to them, not just everything internal, but you're attracted to them externally too, at least you should be. And so, you know, I, there's something deeply sexual about that, but that doesn't have to mean that you engage in physical sexual activities that the ones that we know we're thinking of. Like, I think holding hands is great. I think we could get into the boundaries later. Don't stay with someone you know you won't marry. That goes along with this because for Christians, the Christians that would listen to my advice, we're not trying to just date just to have fun. We're not dating just to have the experience of dating. The experience of dating is supposed to go somewhere. It's supposed to lead me somewhere. And where it's supposed to lead me is to finding the person that I'm going to marry and the person that I'm going to hopefully be with for the rest of my life. That's the plan. That's how we're looking at this. And so, but if you recognize you're not going to marry that person, then, uh, and, and you've made it clear to them that that's how you're looking at dating, which is another thing we could put on the list is get your intentions out there, then I would just say to you that uh, that's kind of unfair to them. Perhaps they're looking at this the same way. And if they're not looking at this the same way, then you also probably should not be in that relationship. Uh, don't stay with someone just for their feelings. If you realize this, I'm only staying with them because and I've been with them for months now, even though I know I want to break up with them and I know I'm not going to marry this person. I know we're not, you know, I, but I'm staying with them because it's just going to hurt them so bad. Well, it's going to hurt them worse when they find out you stayed for months with them after you knew you weren't going to stay with them ultimately. Uh, know your obligations. For example, we've talked a little bit about obligations already. You need to be kind. You need to be respectful in all the ways that should go underneath that. And we can unpack more of that kind of stuff later. Um, but uh, you're not obligated to treat them as a spouse in every way because they're not your spouse. Uh, you, if you decide you want to break up with them, you need to know what, what's my obligation. Have I vowed myself to this person? And even if privately you did the thing that everyone does when they're dating where you say something like, oh, I'm going to marry you. Oh, we're going to be married. Yeah, we're going to live together forever and all that. Okay, you got wrapped up at the moment and you said some things. When you realize that, that, that maybe you didn't mean that, you're not obligated to the covenant of marriage because you said some things. Now, if you have, if you're, if you're engaged and everybody knows, okay, well, different story. Still, you're not married, and still, that doesn't mean you should necessarily continue. But just pointing out that sometimes people, because of the way they talk in the car in private, begin to think they have marital obligations that they don't have. You, if you need to break up with someone, break up with them. Uh, and lastly, be aware of traps that you set for yourself. 
uh, there's a certain type of personality, for example, this is just a for instance, but for instance, uh, a, a per, certain types of people have a personality type where they grab onto someone and, and they become familial invested in this, familially invested in this and all these sorts of things. And they grab on and, and they, they, they attach to people feelings wise very quickly. And for them, for such a person, if that's you, you might then think it's, it's, un, it's unthinkable that I would ever be without this person, even though I see that maybe I shouldn't. And even though this is the first person I've ever dated. Well, uh, you need to be aware that that could be a trap in your personality that, that could go off and be cautious about that. Also, you should be cautious when you recognize those sorts of things in other people and be careful not to abuse that too. So um, I think that this is a decent list for me to scribble out pretty quickly 